John 3 verse 36, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. However, there is a fact that, the doctrine about the wrath of God has fallen on difficult times. In today's world, any notion of the wrath of God confuses our feelings. It is too disturbing and narrow-minded. We are now leading a life where we permit ourselves to have the right as the judge and God's character is being examined. You may ask, how can hell be righteous, why would God ask the Israeli ties to attack and destroy the Canaanites, or, why is God always so angry? The fact is that, you are not the only one who struggles with these queries. And the more people like you, the more necessary to give you the correct thinking about the wrath of God. Perhaps, the concept of God's wrath may be a challenge for some of us to understand. So, what exactly is the wrath of God? Is that getting revenge on humankind, who do not have faith in Him, or who have offended Him? I do not think so. Paul has said in Roman 2 17 that the wrath and judgment of God will come to those who have rejected the truth and followed devils. In terms of the wrath of God, here are five biblical truths about it that I would like to share with you today. First and foremost, God's wrath is just. Many people now believe that the God of the Old Testament is a moral monster who does not deserve to be worshipped. The biblical authors, on the other hand, have no such issue. Indeed, God's wrath is said to be perfectly in sync with God's justice. And Romans 2 verse 5 provides us with a quite comprehensive view of what the wrath of God is, but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when His righteous judgment will be revealed. God's wrath is not rage directed at those who have wronged Him. Rather, it is His just judgment on those who do evil. God is completely righteous. And He will judge us by His righteous standard. God's wrath against sinners is simply doing them what they deserve. Thus, God's wrath is proportional to human sinfulness. Second, God's wrath is to be feared. God's wrath is to be feared because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3 verse 23. God's wrath is to be feared because, apart from Christ, we are justly condemned sinners. God's wrath is feared, because He is powerful enough to carry out His promises. God's wrath is to be feared because apart from Christ, God also promises the eternal punishment. Third, God's wrath is consistent in the Old and New Testaments. It is common to assume the Old Testament God as cruel, harsh, and wrathful, and the New Testament God as gentle, patient, and loving. Neither of these depictions is representative of Scripture's teaching on God's wrath. Both the Old and New Testaments contain terrifying descriptions of God's wrath. As described in Romans 1 verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. The judgment of God is for all those who do cruel and immoral things. God stands as the judge of all mankind. Each of us will have to give an account of what we have done, and how we have lived. God gives us the freedom to choose how we will live. What remains is that, Whatever decision we make we must be aware of the consequences of those choices. The fourth fact is that God's wrath is His love in action against sin. This may seem counterintuitive but listen to me. God is love, 
and God does everything for the glory of God. Romans 11 verse 36 says, For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. He is in love with his glory more than anything. As a result, God dominated the world in such a way, that he receives the most glory. This means that, God must act justly, and judge sin by responding with wrath, or else he is not God. His wrath against sin is motivated by his love for his glory. Admittedly, his love for his glory is a sobering reality for many, and obviously, it is not good news for sinners. After all, it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Last but not least, God's wrath is satisfied in Christ. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, 1 Timothy 1 verse 15. God loves humanity. That's why he sent his only begotten son to the earth to save us from sins. But that doesn't mean he accepts our sins. And that doesn't mean it is not a big deal when his beloved son was sent to suffer and die for humankind. He died since he absorbed God's wrath for our sins. As stated in Romans 3 verse 25, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement, through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this, to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. It indicates that, Christ satisfied God's wrath against us, as a result of our sins. And now, all who put their faith and trust in Jesus and only Jesus for our salvation have been saved from eternal death and God's punishment. Some people may prefer to ignore mentions of God's wrath. Others appear to take pleasure in declaring God's wrath on guilty humanity. But how should the children of God like we, respond to passages that express God's wrath? I believe it is appropriate for us to emphasize God's wrath, in the same way that Jesus and his apostles did. They made it clear that God's wrath was reserved for those who rebelled against him. When you remember this, you will see God's wrath, and God's love all wrapped up in the same action. You don't have to be afraid of his wrath because, if you have faith in Jesus Christ, he will take it for you. You are the result of his grace. Yes, God may discipline you if necessary, but you will never experience his wrath. Thank you.